We just can't see them in the daytime. It has to get dark for us to see them and to see them twinkle. We're told in Psalm 148 that the sun, the moons, and the stars are there to praise God. Would we never have a star to praise God if we didn't have darkness? There are four important differences between darkness and light. First, in the light, we see what is near. But in the darkness, we see that which is far away, like the stars. The second is that in the light, we may see more clearly but in the dark, we see a lot further. <coughs> Thirdly, we may think our brightest thoughts in the daytime, but we tend to think our deepest thoughts when we're lying in our beds at night. And fourthly, we may learn more about others during the day, but we learn more about ourselves in the hours of the night. It's been said we can dress as though we're intelligent, but when we open our mouths, people will know whether you're intelligent or just plain dumb. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> when someone has gone through a dark period in their life, they'll learn some truths that they can use and that will remain with them the rest of their lives. We as Christians tend to revert to a bunch of cliches. You know, when something goes, well, it was God's will. Don't tell me when some drunk driver is going down the road and hits somebody and kills them, that was God's will. Mm -hmm. I've had some heavy theological discussions about that. Mm -hmm. It was not God's will for that driver to be drunk, and it wasn't God's will for him to get and kill somebody. But we do. We tend to revert to such cliches when we don't know what else to say. And we don't know what to say to somebody who's going through these difficult times in life. When we don't know what to say, then don't you think it'd be a little more important to just keep our mouths shut? <laughs> because we're misrepresenting God when we say such things. We just need to realize that we may not understand because we haven't undergone what they are experiencing in life. There is a discipline in darkness as well. And often that discipline is to just keep your mouth shut and be silent. It's better to be serving God in the darkness than to be standing alone in man-made light. Isaiah 50, 11 says, All you who light fires and provide yourselves with flaming torches, Go, walk in the light of your fires and of the torches you have set ablaze. This is what you will receive from my hand. You will lie down in torment. One of the most dangerous temptations that we all face is to light our own fire when the darkness comes into our lives. We think we have the answer. If God has ordained the darkness then wait for God to bring the light. Wait for God and trust His promises. We must never get the idea that darkness can overcome light. Darkness cannot overcome light. It cannot withstand light. You don't believe it? Go in your bedroom, turn on the lights, and then open the closet door. Where was the darkness? in the closet. Did it come out and put out the light in the bedroom? No. Darkness cannot overcome light. You can't go out here and open the door, the front door of your house, in the middle of the night, and darkness come in and put out your lights. It just doesn't work that way. Light always overcomes darkness. If the light has been removed from situations in life, then God in His wisdom has allowed us to be in that darkness for a purpose. God is the one who allowed it to come our way. So we shouldn't be foolish enough to think that we have to solve the answer. 
In other words, don't try to undo what God is doing. There's no sure guide for us to follow when we try to undo it ourselves. It's like a man getting up in the middle of the night with a flashlight and going out in his yard and trying to shine it on a sundial to see what time it is. <laughs> God has a purpose for everything. We have to let God bring the light in. You know, God told Abraham that he and Sarah were going to eventually have a child of their own. Now you've got to remember, Abraham was in his 80s at this time. And God didn't give him that child right away. So Abraham decided to take matters into his own hands. He went out and found him another woman. Because Sarah was past the age for bearing children, they thought. And he had a child named Ishmael. Think about the suffering that has come through the decades the generations because of Abraham not being patient and waiting on God because Abraham's later children became the tribes of Israel. Ishmael's children are the Arabs. Mm. And look at what has gone on for thousands of years between the descendants of two half-brothers. Because Abraham was not patient to wait for God to come and bring light in that darkness in his life. Faith does have a daybreak. But we have to remember that if our sun sets, it's going to rise again. It will rise again. Isaiah 50 and verse 4 said that God wakens us in the morning. Even though we may be in darkness right now, there is a better day of coming. Amen. As the old gospel says. Right. There's a better day coming. If you're in darkness, trust God. Amen. God is all powerful. He can turn every tear into a pearl. Hmm. <laughs> and Matt comes to us this morning requesting membership. Oh, uh, I get a little terrorized. <laughs> He's my buddy. Um, this has been a very big step for me, Matt. My Matt was raised Muslim. And he's really been struggling with him. I don't know if you follow him on Facebook, but in the last couple of weeks, every few minutes, he's posting scriptures. And last Sunday, he came in and he said, The book of Ephesians is my favorite book. <laughs> so, so we're real proud of him, Matt. And this morning you find in your bulletin a copy of our reception into the membership. And now, as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? I will. Members of the congregation and the household of God, I commend Amen to you for your love and your care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and complete it in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. And as members together, we be one body of Christ in the congregation. Christ's church peace, we will be one of our
the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. said earlier that God's doing things in this church. They met is the 18th members since July. Yeah. All right.